Latent heat. Matter um, exists as a solid, a liquid, and as a gas. There's also a fourth state of matter called the plasma, which is a hot gas where some of the electrons are stripped off of the, of the atoms and it becomes conducting. We're not going to worry too much about plasmas right now. We're not talking about blood, blood plasma here. We're talking about plasma physics. Um, solid, liquid, and gas. Going from liquid to a solid, we call that freezing. Going from solid to liquid, we call that melting. <laughs> and uh, liquid to a gas, we call that evaporation. That's what happens on the surface of your skin when the uh, liquid water on your skin evaporates and it cools you. Uh, condensation is what happens when you go from a gas to a liquid. And uh, you also use con the word condensing to, to describe um, going from a gas to a solid. And then subliming uh, is what happens when you take a solid straight to a gas. During a phase change, the temperature of the mixture does not change, provided the system is in thermal equilibrium. So here's the idea, and, and you've seen this, uh, probably you, those that, that, that cook uh, have seen this before. You've got, you're making divinity or whatever over the stovetop, you have your candy thermometer in there, uh, the temperature of the mixture increases, 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 and it reaches a particular temperature, say 212, or here in Logan it might be a little less than that, the boiling point of water, and then the temperature just stays there for the longest time, even though it's boiling and, and, uh, and the reason is that liquid water in the pan can't get any hotter than 212, otherwise it would be a gas. And in fact, that's what's happening in the, in the pan while, it's, while, while you're heating it up. You're converting that liquid to a gas, and that gas can be at a higher temperature than 212 degrees. So uh, 212 is 100 degrees C. So as you add heat, um, you, you can take a, an ice cube can be at a temperature that's less than freezing. It doesn't have to be at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees C. It can be less. So you can start it at a low, low temperature, heat it up until it starts melting. And then right here what's happening is that um, when you first arrive at this point, all of that ice is still ice. But then as you add heat to it, uh, the ice is melting, but the ice and the, the water that are there together are still sitting at 32 degrees Fahrenheit until you melt all the ice. And then the temperature of that, which is now water, can increase. And the temperature can be anywhere between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212, that is 0 and 100 C. Uh, the, the water warms up. Then you arrive at this point, and that's what happens when you've got a pan of water over the stove. That candy thermometer is in there, it's still measuring 212, 212, 212, 212. Um, and, but as that is occurring, you're boiling, you're vaporizing the water, sending that water into, into steam. Eventually it all boils away, and then you can uh, heat up the steam. That's why it's easy to burn yourself with steam. Uh, easier to burn yourself with steam than it is with, with uh, well, at least the steam can have a higher temperature than water can, than boiling water can. All right, latent heat is the heat that must be supplied or removed to change the phase of a mass M of a substance. So I want to go back to this slide. And so what we're talking about with latent heat is, is how much heat it takes to boil all of that water. As it turns out, it's a lot. Uh, and that's called the latent heat of vaporization, that much heat from here to there. Um, this amount of heat that it takes to melt ice is called the latent heat of fusion. So um, the heat supplied or removed, you can imagine that the bigger the pot of water, the more heat you're going to have to add to convert all that water into steam. And that's true. That's why the heat, the latent heat, is proportional to the mass. And I'm sorry, not the latent heat, but the heat added. 
So this Q is the heat supplied or removed. That's how much heat you have to dump into it to convert that water into a gas, um, into water vapor. M is the mass, and then L is the latent heat. It's the number of joules per kilogram of material that you need to dump into it in order to convert it from, uh, from one phase to another, say, a liquid into a gas. So uh, let's look at water. Melting point is at 0 degrees C. We all know that. Boiling point is at 100 degrees C. That's what we know so far. The latent heat of fusion, this is the heat required to convert um, ice at 0 degrees C into water at 0 degrees C. And that's 33.5 times 10 to the 4 joules per kilogram. Well, then, then you can start heating up that water, and then you get the water up to 100 degrees, and then how much heat does it take to convert that water into uh, water vapor or steam? And the answer is this number here. And look how big that number is, 22.6 times 10 to the 5. It takes a lot of heat to convert liquid water into steam, much more than it does to, to convert um, ice. So this is for, uh, for fusion. That's ice, I'm sorry, that's solid into liquid, or vice versa. So that's, if you're converting a solid into a liquid, you have to add up this amount of heat. If you're converting a liquid into a solid, then you have to subtract that amount of heat. You have to get it out of it somehow. And then this for vaporization is for a liquid into a gas, or going the other way to subtract it. All right, ice at zero degrees C. But remember that, that this is the amount of heat needed at zero degrees C. So if you want to take some ice that's at a negative 30 degrees C, and then heat it up to zero degrees C, you have to, it's not latent heat we're talking about. You're not changing the phase of the material. You're not changing from a, a solid to a liquid or anything. So you have to use the um, specific heat capacity to bring, to figure out how much um, energy it, it takes, how much heat it takes to bring it up to zero. And this is a good example. Ice at zero degrees C is placed in a styrofoam cup containing 0.32 kilograms of lemonade at Point, uh, 227 degrees. The specific heat capacity of lemonade is virtually the same as that of water. After the ice and lemonade reach an equilibrium temperature, some ice is st still remains. Find the mass of the melted ice. Pretty cool problem. Uh, you all been, you've all done this experiment before. You put ice in your lemonade. Uh, it melts some of the ice, and there's some left over, keeping it cool. Um, Find the mass of the melted ice. Assume that the mass of the cup is so small that it absorbs a negligible amount of, of uh, heat. So we got cold ice so here's my ice cube and here's my lemonade. That stands for lemonade. And we are initially the ice is at zero degrees C. It's usually it'll be colder than that. From your freezer, it might be minus 10 degrees C. Um, but let's just make it simple at zero degrees C. Containing 0.32 kilograms of lemonade. At 27 degrees C. All right. And they're going to find um, the ice and the lemonade reach at equilibrium temperature. Some ice still remains. Find the mass of the melted ice. All right. So the heat gained by the melted ice is going to be, you're going to convert that ice to water. And the heat that you gain by that is, is the mass times the latent heat of fusion. 
And then this is going to be the heat lost by the lemonade. Now, this is specific heat capacity of lemonade, and we're, say we're saying that it's going to be basically the same as water. So we're going to be looking at the specific heat capacity of water, the mass of the lemonade, and times, and this again is the mass of the lemonade times the change in the temperature. And um, the change in the temperature is, um, we're assuming that the, let's see, right, okay, so the, the ice has to, um, so the mass of the ice melted, so we're solving for this equation, this uh, number right here, this mass. We're going to divide through by the latent heat of fusion. So we're going to put in the specific heat capacity of water, it's 4186 joules, we've seen that number before, times the mass of the, oh sorry, lemonade, is that 0.32 kilograms, the number right there, mass of lemonade, times the change in the temperature of that lemonade. So the whole lemonade is going to go from 27 degrees down to 0 degrees C. At the end, everything's going to be at 0 degrees C. So the lemonade's change in temperature is 27 degrees C, divided by the latent heat of fusion of water, which is that number that we, um, 3.35 times 10 to the fifth. Yeah, that's that number right here just expressed in terms of 10 to the 5th instead of 10 to the 4th. I've moved this decimal place over here and made this a 5. So that's where the numbers come from. And the amount of ice melted is 0.11 kilograms. And then at the end, so this is initially, at the end, finally, we've got a little bit more water in there, a smaller ice cube, because some of that has been converted into water, and so pretty cool. All right, so another example. Oh, and then what I was going to say is that this whole thing is at zero degrees C instead of 27 degrees C, which is the whole point in the first place. You wanted to cool that uh, lemonade down. All right, a block of mass. Now this one really uh, gets the whole gamut. So this one goes back to this, uh, this diagram here. We're going to heat up some ice, bring it up to, uh, and then we're going to melt it. Then we're going to heat up the water, and then we're going to boil the water, and then we're going to heat up the water vapor. It goes through all one, two, three, four, five steps. All right, a block of, my, of ice of mass 2 kilograms is at a temperature of negative 50. How much heat is required to convert this ice into steam? As it turns out, a lot. So first thing we need to do is to, to heat it up from negative 50 C up to 0 degrees C because I can't convert the ice into water, I can't melt the ice until it's at 0 degrees C. So I have to first heat it up. So we plug in the numbers for ice so this is the specific heat capacity of ice times the mass of two, two kilograms uh, times 50 degrees is how much we're going to increase the temperature to heat it up to zero. Uh, and that gives 2 times 10 to the fifth joules. The heat required to convert the ice to water, well, that's a latent heat situation. The water is sitting at zero degrees C, and this heat is going to be the mass of the, uh, the ice well, the ice is at zero degrees C, and it's going to turn into water at, at zero degrees C. So times the latent heat of fusion, this is the number we saw before, 33.5 times 10 to the 4, or 3.35 times 10 to the 5th, same thing, times 2 kilograms, so it's 10 to the 5th joules, uh, more than what required, was required to heat up the ice. Um, heat required to heat the water to uh, 100 degrees C. Well. That's the specific heat capacity of water, a number that we've seen many times. Two kilograms is the mass. Change in temperature is 100. That's 8.4 times 10 to the fifth. Again, all these are around 8 times 10 to the fifth, getting a little bit more each time. 
He required to convert the water to steam at 100 degrees. We might expect this to be a lot of heat, and we would be right. So we've got the mass, which is again 2 kilograms, uh, times the latent heat of vaporization in this case, which is a big fat number. And that gives us 4.5 times 10 to the 6 joules. This gives by far um, the, the largest amount of heat. Um, it's almost twice this one here, which takes a lot of energy to convert water into steam. And we actually don't have a fifth step, so basically if we go back to this, this one, we're not actually going to heat up this water vapor. We're just going to convert it to water vapor. At the end of the day, everything's at 100 degrees C. That water vapor is at 100 degrees C. So the total heat required is, is that. That's how you do those problems. But I hope you remember this, that uh, as, you're, as you've got a pan on the, wa on the, on the stove and you're thinking about uh, raising the temperature, you raise it up to 212, it just sits there. It's just really cool. And just think about the process of those molecules that are, that are bound uh, fairly closely together in, 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 the, in the water, liquid water, they have to separate from each other. You have to add a lot of energy to separate them from each other and, and create uh, a gas.